just got this in. So this is Viafly's Short Saber. This is a smart electronic short circuit protection device that you can use to protect your drone builds from mistakes in your work. Now, can this thing really save us from the magic electronic smoke that happens for no reason when we plug in our builds? Today, we're going to find out. I'm going to hopefully see if we can not blow up some stuff here and give you guys a general overview of this device. So how this works is simple but unique. It utilizes an e-fuse or electronic fuse that shuts down the current without actually blowing a physical fuse on the board that would need to be replaced. All you need to do is disconnect the power and the e-fuse resets itself after it's been tripped. The advertised reaction time is 3 milliseconds for short detection and 10 milliseconds for overcurrent. It's got a little switch here to adjust the current trip between 1 amp and 2 amps. It's set to 1 amp by default and later we're going to explore some of the other options for changing sensitivity and why you may or may not want to do that. All right, so let's put it to the first test. Now this is going to be interesting. I've got a real flight controller here and some old electronics hooked up to it and it'll either become a sacrifice to our tests or be saved. I've got a man-made short here and we'll go over that a little bit later but first let's do a more basic test. Let's just see how the short saver reacts to this disaster here and I've got as you can see I've made a short. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get a battery here and plug it in. Green says we're ready to go. And that's it, just so you guys can see. That's the red, it cut it off. So this is not sparking and going crazy, even though we have a very, very basic short here. Now I'm gonna show what would happen if this smoke stopper or short saver wasn't in the picture. Oh, oh, it smelled. Oh, my. Ugh. Oh, God. All right. See, that's how fast it happens. Boom. That's it. So, uh, yeah, do me a favor and smash that like button if you enjoyed that because, ah, oh, that really smells. That really, oh, look at that. Ugh. Yeah. So that is it. That's how fast it happens. Now, for the next test, I'm going to go ahead and do the flight controller. We're going to see how it protects the whole unit as well as the connected devices. See, I've got a camera on here and I've got a receiver. Now, I'm really curious because, see, a lot of devices here are connected to the 5-volt regulator. And these regulators on these boards are only rated for about 1 or 2 amps. So it is crucial that it cuts it off as soon as possible, not only to save the flight controller, but also to save the onboard regulator. So for this test, again, we're gonna stick with one amp for our uh, current protection there. All right, so let's take a look at the mistake here on this board. Now, the five volt regulator ground is connected to the main power lead. And look at how close some of this stuff is together, you know, right? I think someone could easily make a mistake of bridging something like this, maybe not noticing that this stuff is touching. So I think this is a, a decent test to try. Well, all right, let's see what happens. Let's hope that all this stuff lives and that the board still works. Right, we're going to plug in the battery to the short saver. And now we're going to plug the main power into the board. And boom! stopped it immediately just like that the red light means we've got a short we are stopped all right now let's remove the short and then plug in a battery to see if everything still works so now i'm going to plug a battery into the short saver we should be safe to plug this thing in now that i've removed the short situation but we'll just let it pass right through the short saver i've plugged it in the board's lit up, we got our little blinking light, we have the receiver is still working, the camera is still working, that means that none of those things appear to have taken any damage. I'll go ahead and turn on my radio, see if we can get that receiver. Alright, so that's it. I've actually got a little green light on the receiver, it's connected to my radio, so that's good. And this camera here, let's see if this camera is working here. 
Hey, look at that. I did little cameras working. There's absolutely no problems with it. And yeah, this is how I record videos. I just use my phone. <laughs> All right, but yeah, the camera's working. None of the electronics on this thing got damaged. Okay, so even though all the electronics on board survive, I'm sure some of you want to see, did the board itself survive? So to prove that, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in here to the computer and see if it comes up as a USB device. And it did. I have no reason to doubt that this thing is still working. We are connecting. It's being a little slow because it is a Pico BLX board. And that's it. We are connected. That's it. We're good. We're all good. So yeah, this thing does still work. It all functions. We've got all our little configuration options here. That comes up. Everything is all here. Everything's good. We got the UR. It's got the setup. Here, look. Woo! Helicopter moving. Yeah, a solarometer on this damn thing is probably not calibrated, but yeah, you get the idea. Good day. It did not end up being needed to be sacrificed, so I get to keep my test board. Now, I tried this thing on multiple different quads, and for the most part, none of them reported any false positives. For example, here I've got the Diatone R349 with the Mamba stack, and this reported that there was no short. This is a smaller build. You see we got the green light, of course, I know this is working, it has no short. So when I connect my self-build to a fully charged 4-cell 1500 milliamp hour battery, once it gets to the ESC tones, the amp spikes are just enough for, the, for a moment that it trips it. Oh, do you see what happened there? It went red. It thought that there was a short, but there's not. So, what can we do to fix this false positive situation. So one thing that we can do is we can change the amperage from one amp to two amp with this little switch. And Vifly does recommend that for bigger builds that you adjust the uh, amperage uh, or the, the trips. And that's the other thing here that we have. We have these S and N pads. You see that S and N there? If you bridge the S pads, you will have a 5 millisecond short circuit detection with 15 milliseconds of overcurrent cutoff. And if you want, you can have you can bridge the end pad for 7 milliseconds and 20 millisecond cutoff time. So you'd have a little bit more leeway uh, for some of your larger builds. But of course, this is more risky depending on what kind of build you're working with. You know, I you always want to try to leave it as low as possible. Now, here's a really easy solution though that didn't require me to change anything or do anything to this. So this is a three cell battery. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. And I'm gonna plug it into my build here. And we are on one amp. I'm gonna change it to one amp. And see, it didn't trip it when it got to the ESC tones. So yeah, this non-fully charged 3-cell doesn't trip it. So if you're not comfortable with changing the sensitivity options, just try using another battery if you're getting a false positive like this. You know, it's nice that there are the options for you to change in case you don't want to use this workaround and you know that you're working on more large size builds that might draw a little burst of power while booting up. That's great, but this is convenient for it in case you don't want to mess with this. Now, I am not by any means encouraging you to work with your quad with the propellers on and a battery plugged in, but this little device here can help stop the motors if they fire up for any reason because the onboard current sensor will trigger and shut you down. I'm going to change it to two amps so we can avoid the trip. You're going to see that the short saver is going to pretty much immediately trip. Oh, look at that. It, it didn't even let the motors go. It just stopped it. I have it armed and it didn't, it didn't even let it go. That's crazy. Now listen, I'm not saying that you should use it for this, and it certainly is not foolproof. But of course, yes, you can significantly lower your risk of self-injury if you are too stubborn 
to remove the props before you work on the drone. Again, I'm not advocating for that, but if that's what you're going to do, this can serve as an extra safety mechanism. This should stop the motors from going nuts if they spin up on the bench unintentionally while you have it plugged in and connected to Betaflight. All right, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review of the Vifly Short Saver Smart Smoke Stopper. You know, this thing is honestly cheap enough that it, to me, it's absolutely worth picking one up. It, I've got the links down in the description below. Uh, if this thing works even one time for you, it's around, it's about 10 bucks. It paid for itself. You get two X, two common connectors, XC60, XC30. Just take some of the guesswork and anxiety out of plugging in a new build or something that you just changed and you want to check yourself. You know, I, I don't care how long you've been soldering. You can always make a mistake. And I'm glad that I'll have this in my available tool bag. Thank you to Vifly for sending it out for me for a review. And I hope that this was informative. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. That will be it for this review. Um, leave me a message down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions I can uh, about this little guy for you. And with that being said, have a great day, guys. I'm going to go do some flying. And you guys take care.